So my name is Alexis Whittem. I'm the Director of Distribution and Educational Programming at Frameline. Um, Frameline is pretty well known in the Bay Area. We've been curating, exhibiting, and distributing LGBT films for over 40 years. Um, so we're mostly known for being host to the largest and oldest LGBT film festival. Um, and so we welcome over, uh, we screen over 150 films, somewhere between 150 and 200 films every June for 11 days. And we get 800 films submitted every year. Um, so we have long relationships with queer filmmakers and kind of an understanding of how to curate for different audiences. So this is sort of what we're known for, but through our Youth in Motion program, um, we actually you know, curate with a really different emphasis in mind, which is youth programming um, and programming for use in schools. Um, so the great, the great thing about this is that we kind of already have access to these films. We have access to these filmmakers. And so we'll come up with a theme. We'll kind of um, listen to the feedback we've gotten from our previous collections and we'll figure out what isn't being covered by mainstream media um, and what films we can select and curriculum we can build around it to make sure that we're kind of addressing issues that maybe aren't happening um, generally in film, on TV, on YouTube, as it relates to queer media. Um, Youth in Motion started actually back in 2008, which was pretty different, it turns out, in terms of um, working with schools and partnerships and, and, you know, the end of the Bush administration. Um, so it actually did start with GSA Network, and it was a California-only program, and we started putting together these DVDs of LGBTQ films, either one feature-length film or a collection of short films, and then building professional curriculum around it and then just making it available for free to school. So um, it shifted a little over time. It's now a national program as of 2014, but the emphasis remains the same. And, um, you know, we know that schools are looking for materials that are from within the queer community and speak to things um, in an educated way and also are available free or um, close to it uh, as some of our collections are. And so it's been really wonderful. Uh, we have 920 schools registered at present. We have schools registered in all 50 states. And basically each school is eligible to receive the free collection of the year that year. Um, all they have to do is register. Um, and the other great thing about the film, you know, as a as a media arts organization, we make sure that we acquire the film with the rights from the filmmaker to have public performance screening rights. So it's gonna be allowed to be used in the classroom, but it's also gonna be allowed to host um, an additional screening with it. If you're, as long as it's admission free, you can put it up uh, in a school assembly, you can put it up in a church, you can put it up in an after school group, you can do um, an event with community groups nearby that have similar emphasis. So. Um, it's really, you know, because we have that background in film and then we partner with GSA Network, we're able to kind of uh, make sure that we're providing film in the right way with the right perspective and then just make it free to schools um, as long as they register. So this year, uh, we actually do this on a calendar basis. We don't do it on a um, school year basis. So our 2016 collection is essentially free through the end of this calendar year as long as someone uh, registers with us. And then anyone who registers at any time last year, this year, they're always eligible for the next one. So when we launch our 2017 collection, probably in late January, early February, that collection will just automatically go out to anyone who's already registered. Um, but we're really trying to push people, sign up this year. I only have a contract with my filmmakers to get this film out, this um, collection expanding gender out this year, and then next year I can't give it away for free anymore. So signing up this year is really great for me to be able to do that. Um, so the 2016 collection has been really amazing. Um, it's called Expanding Gender Youth Out Front. It has four short films, and um, it, it's all about transgender and gender expansive youth or young adults. Um, and it has this professional curriculum that allows you to have conversations. And it also does something that we're really excited about, which you'll see when we show a couple of clips later, which is have perspectives that are really different. You know, we're gonna, with the film Tom Girl, we're gonna have a seven-year-old who's gender expansive. And with Passing, we're gonna have black trans men in their 20s who are, um, you know, talking about intersectionality of race and identity and um, male privilege, right? So what we're doing is we're making sure that we kind of have films that can be useful in really different types of school districts, really different ages of school districts, you know, if it's a sixth grade class versus a 12th grade class, um, and also just, just what your community is ready for, depending on the type of place you're in. I mean, the U.S. is a very different place, and we have 
schools registered in Alabama, schools registered in San Francisco. And so we try to make both the films and the curriculum as broad as possible in order to leave the power of how to use those films in the hands of those um, who are receiving them. Uh, so these are just a couple of student and teacher reviews. Um, I'm not gonna read through them, but essentially, you know, we get really great feedback. We're always looking for feedback. So if you are registered or you're going to be registered, um, please do fill out our, our forms. It helps us keep the program funded. Um, so this is sort of just great feedback that we've had and just wanted to point that out. Um, so we're going to do a little preview of the Expanding Gender Collection. As I mentioned, these are two of the four films. Um, the first one, which you see on the left of your screen, uh, Tom Girl, is about Jake. Um, who's a gender expansive seven-year-old, and then on the right you see Passing, uh, which is about um, black trans men who are um, young adults. Um, and so we're going to just watch a little bit. Uh, we're going to watch about a three to four minute clip of Tom Girl, the film on the left, and then I'm going to go right into just a one minute trailer of Passing. So um, you're going to see that pop up on your screen. Sorry about that. And if you have any trouble with sound, just let me know. Um, so just FYI, this clip from Tom Girl is already a couple minutes into the film, so it's a clip about, about three minutes in. It's hard to describe Jake. <laughs> Jake is like... How do you describe Jake? First thing I noticed about Jake was his hair, man. His brilliant locks, dude. <laughs> and his glasses are always sliding down his nose. And he has a unique style too, which I think that is his own. Kind of like loose style with his gender. He'll he'll rock like a blazer and jeans and you know Converse and like a hot pink sweater. Not all girl clothes, just some girl clothes. I only wear like the tights or just a, a pair of girl shirts. And I and I got a new favorite color ever, hot pink. I think Jake's style would be um, investigative. He likes to uh, see the world and make it his own. It's everything, everything that you see, everything that could possibly be colorful and put together and put on him is Jake's style. Jake, just like any kid, is just as likely to walk downstairs in just his underwear as he is to be dressed as Iron Man, as he is to be dressed in a skirt, as he is to be dressed in shorts and a t-shirt. Jake wears just as much uh, like boy clothing as, like, as uh, girl clothing. As a seven-year-old, I'm amazed that he has such confidence in who he is. He already knows who he is, you know? And I feel like I'm still trying to figure out who I am. Jake is Jake. Jake style, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Jake is who he is, and, and I love him for it. Sometimes if I wear, like, full girl clothes to school, I think I might be, be like, mistaken as, like, a new student or something. Gender nonconforming is a word that we use to describe people's behavior that doesn't fit in with our expectation of how they should behave according to the gender they were assigned when they were born. are really alarmed about the gender non-conforming behavior of their kids when they see their little boy consistently wanting to wear a princess dress some parents get really upset they wonder about well is he gay or what did I do wrong many cultures in the world have celebrated gender non-conforming people over 130 Native American tribes have words to describe people who inhabit two genders there is one tribe that believes there are no less than four genders. All kids like pretty things. 
I like shiny things. It's not a gender thing. It's a, you know, shiny thing. Jake used to put on my friend's high heels all the time. He used to walk around in high heels and like do little fashion shows and stuff. And it was never a big thing. And it, he just kept doing it as he was growing up. He loved pink. And I assume that just came from his mom liking pink. Then it was, yeah, it was nail polish. And then he wanted to grow his hair longer and not cut it. Then started wearing tights. And then I guess he asked his mom for a dress at some point in time. And it was like the only thing that she kind of held off on for a bit, being like, that's a definite big leap to go from wearing tights to school or ballerina shoes to school. And then it's a big difference wearing uh, a dress. It's a good skirt. It's comfortable, stretchable, so I, you don't have to worry about size. The look of it, the little bow, it's the best skirt I ever had. All right, so Jake talking about his skirt is basically my favorite thing. Um, and then this is sort of, and that sort of gives you an idea of a film that's um, geared towards younger kids that could, anybody, younger youth can watch. I think it also plays well to older youth. Um, and also it's, it has parent perspectives and that's really great and something that we really wanted to emphasize in this collection, which, um, you know, with transgender and gender expansive youth, youth, there have to be more interactions with adults um, because, you know, this, this is happening when, when kids are younger and there's going to there's gonna be adult policies happening around it. Um, so we are really great really proud to have that in the collection. And then Passing um, is kind of a completely different film. This is just a one minute trailer for Passing. You wonder at the end of the day whether, you, whether you'll ever, ever, ever be satisfied. And that's where I'm at. Am I gonna be satisfied? Am I ever gonna get to that point? Am I ever gonna get that, that happiness, that, 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 that aha moment? Or am I gonna be consistently stuck in the struggle of not being accepted for who I am, having to change, you know, who I am to fit the role and my physical. And people don't realize when they are, you know, happy in who they are automatically, um, that it's harder for you because you're trying to be like them and not lose yourself. Um, so, just to get back to the show. Um, so that's just a couple of our, of our films that we have. Um, that's two of the four that appear on this collection. Uh, and then just to kind of go over what, what you're seeing in the, when you get the curriculum action guide. Um, we're always going to be making something that has curriculum and it has an action guide between we have something for the classroom and we have something for what are you doing for that next step? What are you doing outside of the classroom? How can you motivate? your LGBTQ students and their allies to go ahead and make bigger, larger, impactful changes in the community. Um, but we, we always start with kind of introduction. You're going to get your key terms and tips on facilitating conversations. We get feedback from a lot of educators that, you know, they just, they don't want to make a misstep. They don't want to say the wrong thing, use the wrong language. So we always include key terms. We're giving you um, some differences in this collection on gender identity, sexual orientation, gender and sex in general. Um, the curriculum applies, there's different exercises depending on which film you're watching. So the nice thing is you can watch a 13 minute film, do a 20 minute exercise. This all goes really easily into one classroom um, content. And it's also um, all core curriculum applicable. So we have how it fits into core curriculum if you're in a state where that is required. Um, and then the action items are where we're more closely aligned with our lovely colleagues at GSA Network. Um, where you're really, how do we, what do we do with this now? How do we apply this to change our policies in schools? Or how do we educate our parents? Or how do we um, have an impact on broader social justice movements that are happening that are aligned with the LGBTQ movement? Um, and then we also do have a section on how to host a screening, which is something that Tomas will cover a little bit um, as we wrap up here. Um, so registering is pretty 
Um, sorry about that. Registering is pretty simple. It's, um, you know, we're a small nonprofit in San Francisco, so it's really just a couple of us. It's myself and my colleague, Taylor, who couldn't be here today, but you'll see both of our contact information on the last slide. Um, so basically, you can register online at our website. You can also just email us, uh, youthinmotion at frameline.org, and you'll see some, you'll get some postcards, likely that'll have our information as well. Um, but it's a, it is a grant-based program, so we do have some specifics that we need in order to send you the film for free. Basically, each school needs to register separately. So if, you're, um, if you have 30 schools that, that you cover for your DASH program, you know, we, just need a, we just need an address for each one and each school to be registered separately, but we can have the same contact person for each one. But we just need to have the name and the address for each individual school, and we will send each school that, that DVD separately. Um, and, and it is limited to schools that have a GSA or a similar student group. Um, but once you have that, it can go in the classroom, it can go um, out for community screening. So it's just sort of a parameter of our grants as they stand. Um, and so once again, if you register by December 31st, you get Expanding Gender for free. We'll like put it in the mail the day of and, and you'll have it within a week um, to show in school. Uh, I also want to let folks know about our two previous collections. The way that our filmmaker agreements work is that it is free for that calendar year, and after that we sell it as cheaply as we possibly can in order to pay for the cost of printing it and to give our filmmakers a little stipend, because um, we do work directly with the filmmakers. Um, and so the last two collections, we have some that go back to 2008, but the last two before Expanding Gender are really strong. Um, visibility through activism is going to cover sort of LGBTQ history in the US um, through, the, through the movement of what Vito Russo did, um, having a really great impact generally on sort of LGBT rights in the 60s and 70s, and then in the AIDS epidemic, and also um, as it relates to media, because um, he's a founder of GLAAD, um, author of The Celluloid Closet, those sorts of things. And then Insights is all about youth perspectives. So this isn't gonna have as much of the family and parental elements, but it is gonna have really different youth perspectives that are not just transgender and gender expansive. It's gonna be LGBTQ kids of, of all kinds. And there's six films on that collection too. So once again, gives you that opportunity to have a lot of ways that you can integrate into um, classrooms or into, you know, spread it out over multiple GSA meetings because you have a bunch of different films to watch. Um, and then also just, in general, um, you know, expanding gender is, we have it on Vimeo, I think it's a couple bucks to rent. So if you host a screening and a parent's like, oh my God, I couldn't make it, you know, you can always redirect them to our Vimeo link. Uh, we do have a, a link that I can get you for preview if you're just, you know, you have a principal, you're trying to get on board or something, you know, they, I can always send you the free link to look at. Um, and then we do distribute other LGBTQ titles and we always have really low rates at that like 25 or $50 rate um, for classrooms. They may not have curriculum, but for instance, the film that Tomas is going to talk about on the next slide, where they recently had a great community screening, um, El Canto del Calibri is a film in our collection. And so, you know, as a nonprofit with a mission to get LGBTQ films out there and to impact change, we're always willing to kind of make things happen as cheaply as possible while basically just making sure that our filmmakers are um, supported. So um, just FYI, you know, and, you, and if you have questions about these films or about other films, and we'll even recommend films that aren't in our collection that we just know of that played at our festival, just let us know. Um, and myself or Taylor can kind of get you some answers on that because there's really so many great films out right now. I can think of like one that played PBS the other day. So um, there's a lot of great queer content out there and it's such a, a great way to impact people who maybe aren't already as open to perspectives when they see a film that moves them. It's just, it's just proven to be a really great um, way to implement change. So I'm going to pass it off to Tomas to tell you a little bit about how to host a screening and what kind of will help a screening to take off and be more impactful in the community uh, in general. Thank you, Alexis. Um, so first off, I think a, a common thread with the CDC dash work now is uh, family engagement and sustainability with that, right? So um, how do we get parents or family members involved in LGBTQ youth health? And I think this is a great way to kind of start that conversation is just by having a film screening that doesn't really have a lot of things at stake besides just showing a film and having discussion around that. And I believe the first step around having these kind of conversation is making sure that there is family engagement and youth involvement um, when planning the event, right? It doesn't necessarily make sense to plan something without those folks' input. Um, 
it's just been shown to have a better effect. Um, research shows that when you have youth and parental involvement, it just goes off, it just runs more smoothly. I and mean, also community partners are really important, uh, right? I think that's kind of a basic standpoint. Um, moving along, mitigating those barriers for folks to actually come to the event. Um, is there child care involved? Is there gonna be a free dinner for folks? Or maybe even like a low cost dinner for folks? Is the location convenient? Or maybe you can get a donated space. And then also offer resources, maybe at intermission or maybe have a resource there before. Um, but I wanna talk about this event was in San Jose. Um, they showed El Canto del Colibri, which is, um, which plays in Spanish, but they had English subtitles, which I thought was really well done. It kind of centered Latinx folks. Um, and the film essentially is around uh, how Latino immigrant fathers uh, supported their queer and trans uh, family members, uh, children, and kind of the, the conversations around the family acceptance with that. Um, and it was a really great film. We had, it was a great turnout, it was around 100 people. Um, at the bottom, you can see all the different um, organizations that kind of were involved. We have the beginning, the start at the time, and they had a queer, uh, resource affair. So all those folks at the bottom had some sort of resource to hand out or just to connect with the community. For about 15 minutes, there was a queer folk dance, which I really appreciated. Um, um, a queer Mexican folk dance. Uh, they did the film, which is about an hour, and then after that, they had the director there, and they had a nice discussion that was in, that was uh, bilingual and translated. So it was in Spanish, and they translated the conversation to English for folks for accessibility purposes. And then after the discussion with the director, they had a nice uh, free, authentic Mexican dinner, which was um, amazing to see. Um, something I do want to point out that Alexis brought up was. Um, the various films that are available. Um, one of the four films in there is A Place in the Middle, um, which is a great film. There's also, um, which discusses um, a third gender in Hawaiian culture. And um, it talks about colonization. It talks about um, race, ethnicity, and identity and um, holding on to that culture. Um, it's a great film. But yeah, so these are just the basics on engaging your community. Um, and Sustainability-wise, this is just something you could maybe do every year, right? Uh, a yearly uh, film to show and showcase with your um, community and then invite community partners, have some food. Um, it's a great way to just have a conversation and dialogue um, and also connect with community partners and also families that can come. Um, and because most of these, if not all of these, are family-friendly. Um, and I would recommend even having like a family-centered, like this movie, having like a family centered uh, movie around this. So that kind of encourages uh, families to come and watch and just kind of, you know, have a, a good time just seeing what this, what our community is about, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's basically um, the gist of sort of the big, what what we do with with these specific youth in motion films and then just generally how to use films to to better get the community involved thank you tomas for highlighting el canto del calibri which has just been um this amazing film that's really i mean the places it's played and the impact it's had have been awesome and i've been to multiple screenings of it and it pretty much just wows audiences everywhere so um i'm it's and and that's such a great way to have a screening is to have food and have the event so um thank you for sharing on that um, and this is just the information on our Youth in Motion project and how to get a hold of Taylor, how to get a hold of me, and sort of how to follow us on social media in general and make sure that, um, you know, you have ways to get this, get the Expanding Gender Collection while it's free this year and generally to be signed up as we um, release more films one year. Um, are there any questions or anything? 